Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And today we're going to break down and discuss Venom Acts of Evil, the Venom Annual uh, that came out just recently. I think this just came out this past week, actually. Uh, it was written by Ryan Cady, who's someone I used to work with at Top Cow. Very awesome dude. Every time I see him at a convention when I was like signing books or when he was signing books, always just a really wonderful person. And I was so happy to see him escalate the way he has, you know, and just like six years ago, five years ago, uh, maybe it was just five years ago, we worked at Top Cow together and he was just starting there. He was coming in right when I was leaving. And, uh, you know, and he got an opportunity to write a couple of like issues for the Top Cow books. And then after that, he took that and turned it into a full career. And he's been doing a lot of great books. If you haven't checked out his stuff, please follow him. I'll put a link to his social media down below. Uh, he has a lot of great books out there. Infinite Dark's another one. Um, and he has just started tapping tackling a bunch of stuff and just really attacked uh, the business. And I, and that's what you need to do to make it in this business. And it was really great to see him grow just in the short amount of time that I've known him. And I can only imagine like the people have known him for years and known that he's wanted to do this for years, how proud they are of him. But me as, as someone who's just known him for a couple years, I'm super proud because he is achieving it. He's, he is making it happen. And that's amazing. Uh, he actually, you know, did a couple books for Top Cow and then got into the DC talent search stuff and got ahead in there and won in that. And he was one in some DC books. He was writing short stories over there and writing books for them. And then now he's over at Marvel and he did like an Old Man Logan backup story in one of the annuals. And then here he is with his first full comic for Marvel and it's a Venom comic. I mean, talk about amazing. Like to me, that's it. That's 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 making it to the top. Uh, but I know Ryan has a lot more aspirations and he's going to keep climbing and, and he's a name to look out for. So make sure you check out Ryan's stuff. I can't sing his praise enough and not just because I know him, but because I know he's a really nice guy and he puts a lot of work into his writing. And it shows in this one, he wrote a really fun Venom story. And before we dive into it, I do want to give out the digital copy. So boom, right there, that's the code. First person to that website, first person to put that code in gets the comic because it's a one-time deal. Once that code is used, it's gone forever, as you guys know. So uh, first person to get it, let me know what you think. Review it yourself in my comment section down below. Let Ryan know what you think of the book too if you got the digital copy. Um, definitely spread the word on this uh, because this book was selling out. I went to two comic book stores. They didn't have it. And then when I went to Legacy Comics uh, in Glendale, luckily they had this variant cover. They only had like three copies left and one of them was this variant cover. And I was like, you know what? I like the other cover. It was really nice, but this one just looked really cool. <laughs> uh, and it had a lot of other characters on it that are tied into this acts of evil storyline that they're doing and basically what this is is these annuals because i know we got a venom annual last year in october around the time the movie came out and that's more like tied into donny cates's run this is not this is more of a drifting continuity because it's really hard to pinpoint when in continuity this takes place you can easily say uh oh maybe it takes place right now because eddie brock when he when the suit comes off he actually has like the shaved head and the beard the way he has in the current comics where he was like on the run with dylan and stuff uh but uh there's no mention of dylan in this and the events that are happening are when he has the suit still before it gets ripped off so i guess maybe you could say it, it takes place between issues six and seven of the new venom arc before eddie's hair gets shaved off and everything like that because it can't take place before that because eddie has long hair so it's it's a little hard to pinpoint the exact continuity but again almost like the sam keith story and exit wounds from wolverine that we talked about in the two episodes ago it doesn't really matter because what ryan's really just trying to do here is just tell a fun venom story and he has to have him interact with a character that he's never you know ever interacted with before so this other character lady hellbender who i've never actually heard of before so this was a nice introduction to me to her she comes across as a little bit like a lobo type um and a little bit like a brainiac type by the end of this issue because there's like a little short story in the back and we'll talk about that one really you know first because it doesn't have venom in it but there's this like nice little short story in the back and let me make sure i get the writer's name right uh emily ryan lerner is the writer and victor ibenez is the artist of this one and uh yeah it's just like this fun little story the colors are actually really good let me give the colorist a shout out too uh triona farrell did the colors and uh yeah it's just like a fun little short story to give you a little bit more background on who uh lady hellbender is or uh and she's She's our Hellbringer. I'm sorry, did I call her Hellbender? Uh, yeah, Hellbender, Lady Hellbender. And so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought it was Hellbringer, and then I was like, wait, am I confusing, like, Final Fantasy stuff or whatever? Um, so, yeah, Lady Hellbender, she's, like, tackling this monster. It says, it's weird, too, because it says, somewhere in Texas now. And I'm like, okay, well, then where does the Venom story take place? Because there's no indication when it does. It doesn't say, like, you know, uh, New York two months ago or nothing like that. So, so I'm like, okay, so somewhere in Texas now is when this one takes place. Um, and uh, and then you have her, like, 
taking down like a beast and uh, and then she's remembering like when she was a kid and she had to take down a, like one of her first beasts on her home planet um and which is a Seknar uh, Seknarf 9 and so she brings down this beast that's on earth in Texas and she brings it back to her home planet and then you see that uh you know that you have her here with like a bunch of monsters and she's like yep uh, I'll protect all of you mama will protect you so apparently she has all these like species and they're all different species so that's what reminded me of like Brainiac or like the collectors or whatever they were called in DC Comics that um that they sent Lobo to hunt down Superman to get the last Kryptonian and then they betrayed him it was in the cartoon series and because Lobo's the last Zarnian so they captured them both and they betrayed Lobo um so it kind of comes across like that so that's maybe why I'm getting like Lobo vibes and stuff uh and, and it, it, with this character but she's pretty neat and so that's basically her role she's like this bounty hunter she goes across the planet she has this uh like ship called the Destro Mundo uh, the Distro Mundo, and uh, it's like this big, crazy-looking ship, and she's uh, flying around in it, collecting all these different species, and something draws her attention to Earth, and she sends down her two, like, henchmen, who is Gasher Gash and uh, Nasher Nash, and uh, they come down to fight Venom, and so Venom's just kind of swinging around uh, New York, just doing his thing, and then these guys show up out of nowhere uh, after Venom is like sees like a homeless guy, and the, the homeless guy's like, "No, stay away from me, Spider Man." And Venom's like, "I'm not Spider Man. I'm not going to hurt you. You're innocent." Uh, and then all of a sudden, these two bounty hunter dudes, the Nasher Nash and Gasher Gash, show up, and they, and you know start a fight with Venom. So Venom, te you know, takes him down pretty easily. And then Lady Hell uh, Bender te teleports Venom to her ship. And the two of them get in this fight. And Simone DeMio, I've never seen Simone's artwork, uh, but I think Simone does a lot of like Power Ranger stuff and stuff with like IDW and other companies. And I got to check out more of Simone's stuff because this artwork is amazing. And Lady Hellbender looks really cool uh, here. She's got these two big gauntlets and uh, she uses those to like separate the symbiote uh, from Eddie Brock. Like in one fell swoop, look at this. She grabs him by the throat and then boom, sends the symbiote away and captures it. Like in one move. Like, I mean, most people and government agencies have tried to do this for years and a couple of them were successful at it uh, by separating Venom and Eddie. But uh, the amount of work that they put into that to do and they needed like Spider-Man or Scarlet Spider or Fantastic Four or someone to help them. But this lady comes in one move, just grabs them, separates them using the power of her gauntlets. And so then, yeah, we get Eddie Brock. And like I said, he looks like he's Eddie Brock circa, you know, ep you know issues seven through 12 or whatever or current of uh, the Venom book. So it, again, it's hard to pinpoint the continuity because he doesn't talk about Dylan or anything like that. So you're kind of not sure where this takes place but it ultimately like i said it doesn't really matter because what ryan's trying to do here is just try to get these two characters to interact because that's the whole point of this acts of evil thing is to get a, a, a you know hero or anti-hero on earth like punisher and some other characters and have them interact with a villain that they've never come across before and that's kind of the fun of these acts of evil stories like that they're doing right now and this is very old school to me and they used to do these things in the 80s and 90s where annuals would kind of all have a common thread uh, so that way if you picked up one annual it'd be like hey if you want to see more stories like this pick up the x-men annual and if you like that one pick up the avengers annual uh not that these stories connect to each other but they're just all kind of similar and they did that with dc a lot too in the in the 90s uh, as well with like a blood something and it was like all these creatures coming in right after the death of superman so it kind of reminded me of, of that and so for that reason i was like got a little nostalgic i'm like oh that's cool that was like that 90s dc crossover um so uh, our event you know and all the annuals so yeah this is uh, really fun and uh just the artwork's fantastic and then so she kind of has eddie now without the suit and she realized how strong eddie is because she says you know that separation would have killed probably most beings uh but you as a human i'm pretty impressed how strong you are and that's also really interesting because this is not the first time we've seen Eddie really prove his strength without the suit. We've seen it a ton of times, but they've really been focusing that a lot in the current comics. And I'm wondering if that's going to you know, pan out to be something like not that Eddie is like super soldier or, or uh, mutant or anything like that. Like, I don't want anything like that to be revealed about him, but it is neat to see his willpower. Uh, and again, that kind of makes me think of Green Lantern because this run, a lot of the Donny Kate stuff makes me think of Green Lantern stuff, the way it's paced. Um, but yeah, you see Eddie's willpower essentially um, showing how strong he is. And he wants the suit back. And the suit is like, you know, saying like Lady Hellbender is going to lie to Eddie. It's, you know, she, you know, she's like trying to seduce Eddie and the suit is essentially getting jealous about that uh, so it breaks out and uh, it once again it takes down Nasher and Gasher uh, and then it rebonds with Eddie and then it comes after Lady Hellbender and then the two of them get into another fight but this time Eddie's using his brains he's staying away from her gauntlets and he gets the upper hand and he actually beats her but then right at the last second she surprises Eddie takes the symbiote rips it off of him and throws it out an airlock and it's like falling towards earth and she's like look you're strong 
but there's no way that uh, you're strong enough to survive a, a, a orbital drop like we're right above your atmosphere so uh you know or right before they get to uh, you know space so if he jumps out he's not gonna like it's not he's not gonna burn up in the atmosphere they're underneath that so they're, they're still trying to leave earth um but it's still the fall is so far that she's like you're you're never gonna survive and he's like you know what i am strong he goes but you're right i'm not strong enough to survive that but we are and he dives out after the suit and on his way down rebonds with it and uh and then the suit goes don't worry eddie we're gonna be fine and then they land safely on a roof and look up and at this point uh lady hellbender uh she's already her her system's been screwed up uh the symbiote went in and hacked her system and is sending her ship back to her planet uh and and uh, and overwrote a lot of things and so she's like what what's going on and then she looks at her systems she's like okay she's like basically i'm not going to be coming back anytime soon i can't override this you screwed up my system i don't know how to uh, undo this um, he's like, but don't worry, I'm gonna, I'll make my way back to Earth, and I'm gonna take that parasite of yours, Eddie, and I'm not just gonna come for it now, I'm also coming for you, I'm coming for Venom, the whole package, and I'm gonna kill you both, um, and that's kind of how the book ends, um, and then again, so it's like a little frustrating, because you're like, all right, if she makes that promise, and then, uh, and then right after, there's a storyline that says, somewhere in Texas, now, and you're just like, so okay, so she come back she came back to earth after eddie maybe <laughs> and uh and and now she, but she didn't go after eddie she went after this other thing so you know i wish maybe the editor of this book uh threw in just like a little time reference of when this takes place or just change this from saying like uh you know uh somewhere in texas now to somewhere in texas two months ago and then maybe at the end of the story they could have introduced oh I just heard about a symbiote on Earth. After she drops off this creature to her home planet, maybe she gets the, the call like, hey, there's something on Earth that might interest you. Um, that would have been a nice way to tie all this in together um, and make it kind of feel like one story. Uh, but it, overall, they're fun. They're both fun little short stories. And again, that's only for continuity sticklers. And sometimes I can be, but uh, ultimately this issue was just fun. It reminded me of that Sam Keith story where it was just like, well, does it really matter where in continuity it takes place? Because really what matters is they tell a fun story. And when I pay five bucks, you know, especially for a book, you know, even if a friend writes it like Ryan Katie, I still want my money's worth. And I would say this was definitely my money's worth. And I love the artwork so much. Simone's artwork was fantastic. So Ryan, good job on your first Marvel book and it being venom i'm so glad because that meant i get to talk about it on this show and make it make you a part of our venom family so welcome to the venom maniacs as some call us uh, or also the parasites which is what i dubbed us so welcome to those two families there you're always going to be a part of us now uh, we are venom and we hope to have you on the show at some point i sent an invitation out to ryan to talk to him about this issue and maybe just his feelings on venom in general and to plug some other stuff he's working on so hopefully you know he'll be down for that and we can set that up for you guys and and uh, we can get that, an exclusive interview uh, with Ryan for you all. So that's what I'm trying to work on now. And hopefully that comes to fruition very soon. But let me know what you guys think of this issue. Did you read it? Did you get the free copy? If so, let me know down below. And I would love to hear your review of it. And if you did pick up this book, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you like? What didn't you like? Because as you know, I don't really do reviews on here. I do discussions. Uh, but overall, I really was impressed with this issue. And it made me really happy to see a friend be the one who wrote it. So that's really awesome too. But I want to hear your thoughts. It's not just about me on the show. It's about us because we are Venom. So let your comments be known in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, we have one more episode I'm going to record today before I go to work, and I'll try to post these as fast as I can. But we're going to talk real briefly about the True Believers one-shots that came out for a dollar that uh, Marvel released to set up for Absolute Carnage, and we'll go through the Absolute Carnage checklist right here. And then I'll try to drop that episode on Tuesday, one day before Absolute Carnage comes out, which is August 7th, which is just a few days from now. So excited, and I know you guys are too. And when that episode drops, uh, that'll be the first episode of the summer of carnage we're going to dive right in and we're going to talk about all of the carnage stuff we're going to cover all 27 issues of absolute carnage we're going to discuss them on this channel and we'll talk about other venom or carnage stuff and venom stuff we have one more venom trade paperback to go through called tooth and claw and that'll help us wrap up the 90s stuff uh, then we'll do a couple one shots uh, before the season ends and then we'll also get into maybe another carnage week where we'll talk about axis uh, minimum carnage and some of the other storylines that carnage was in including superior carnage as well Thanks so much for watching the show as always. That's a lot of stuff coming up. So I hope you guys stay subscribed so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks. See you in the future. Peace.